So first thing we need to do is we need to head over to the Interchain test repository. We have a we have built a local Interchain environment that not only allows it you to easily launch a Juno chain, but you can also launch other chains and relay between them. So we'll head over to that repo now. You can find this at strangeloveventures slash interchain test. And then within here, there is a, a folder called local interchain. You can click on this and it will have an entire setup guide for Mac, Linux, as well as Windows and Windows Server. So before this was not possible to build, say, a WASM client or a, a WASM contract on Windows, now you can actually run that chain in through, through Docker and all of the setup guide is here. So the first step that we need to do if you're on Mac or Linux is to open up your terminal and CD to where you want. I will make this bigger as well. Within this, you can then git clone that interchain test repository and let that clone. And then we'll, we'll change into the local interchain once that does. Now we're gonna change into this repository and then we're going to make install the binary. Uh, we need to go mod tidy, that may happen sometimes, and then make install. Great. Now we have local interchain installed locally. You can access this with local-ic. Let's go into like the features that local interchain actually has. So this is local interchain and it is a tool to build and to, to launch private test nets either on yourself or in GitHub actions for say CI pipelines or different use cases where you maybe want to set up a very complex environment or a simple environment for chains. And this allows you all of those features uh, and you can add them or remove them as you need. So we can go find this within the, the base here. So let's go to a Juno IBC example that comes with a local interchain packaged already. You can see here with just very simple JSON configuration, you can specify what version of Juno do you want to use. Maybe you want to change the nominations where if you wanted to modify this, if you were a chain developer, gas prices, the coin types, I, uh, the, the trusting period for read layers, how, how many validators you want on this testnet, how many nodes, uh, block times. If you want IBC paths, you're able to specify these paths and then you can use these within your tests and we'll go over some of that. Encoding options is thing like if you uh, implement Juno or Cosmosm, you can just add that in there. Another really useful thing for developers here is the Genesis where a lot of times mainnet already has a set genesis, but maybe you want to try some contract for something that is not enabled yet. For example, let's say that FeeShare was not yet enabled, but we had uploaded the module. We, via this, you would be able to enable that for a local testnet to ensure that FeeShare did indeed work. And so in this case, we show voting period, we make it 15 seconds, the max deposit period, we make that 15 seconds, and then we set the minimum minimum deposit to Juno. This way that you can make voting periods happen quickly if you wanted to test, say, the Juno charter or some, some other difficult governance proposal process can go through this quickly. You can see if it actually works on chain. And if it does, then you can push that to mainnet or testnet and involve other people as well. The final thing here is accounts, where you're able to specify as many accounts that you already have the mnemonic for, and now you can control those within this. However, I want to specify, you do not need the Juno D binary. You do not need any of these binaries. It is all handled through Docker. So this is all gonna be done through a REST API and we have built out those clients for you. You can also build out your own clients with other programming languages. By default, we have access to Bash, Python, and Rust, as well as Go. And in the future, we'll have things like TypeScript, JavaScript, um, and, and other languages like that. And then in this example here, we have a very basic IVC chain, which is also connected through the same IVC path. And all of this will just work natively out of the box. If you need more complex examples, there are other examples here, such as Cosmos Hub connected to Juno and also connected to Terra. And all of these are intertwined and connected together, but that is out of scope for this video. So with this now, what we want to do is let's start a Juno test network on version 17, which is the current latest. And then let's launch contracts and test execution against these environments. So what we're going to do here is we're going to run the local interchain binary and we're going to check for the chains. Whenever you install this, it automatically statically links to, to this directory. So anything that you add in here can be accessed from any directory that you're in. From here, I want to start one of the chains. In this case, it's actually going to be two chains for Juno IBC. This is going to take all of that Genesis configuration and begin to actually 
set up your validators locally, uh, connect the genesis together. It's going to get both of those up to date, ready to go based off of our configuration. And then it's going to start a relayer in the background and begin to relay and connect between those packets there. We can see this all happening in real time, and this does take about 30 seconds. In the future, we're looking to cache this data since a lot of this is the same, and then you'll be able to start this up within like two to three seconds after the first time of starting. If we come over here, we can see the Docker process is running, and these will all these are going to expand out and show all of the ports here, and you're gonna be able to interact with these as you would any other native Cosmos chain, as well as through our REST API, which we'll show here in a minute. If we head back here, we can now see that the relayer is actually linking this Juno IBC channel, which we had set back here. And we could have named this anything. This is just whatever we want to specify. I want this, uh, this chain A to connect to chain B. And if we had a chain C, we could also add that here in the array too. It's also specified here the block times are fast. This allows for, for quicker relaying here, as well as quicker, quicker execution. All right, so now we've had the chain up. Both chains are up, they're being relayed against, and we can see that within the Docker processes. So if we run here, we can see the relayer is running on latest. You can also change this as well within the configs. Uh, so if we see here, you can change and add extra startup flags. You can run your own version of a relayer if you're using something, for example, like interchain queries, where you need a special uh, relayer for that based off of your protocol for something, say, like Polytone or a modified Polytone. So now that, that we have these chains up, how do we interact with these? Because as a Docker, as someone who uses Docker, I don't really like Docker in the fact I don't want to execute against it. We've solved that. There's a REST API that gives you full access over all the nodes, all the information that you'll need to, to work in this network, which can then be used in our other programming clients and drivers that we have. So I'm gonna head over into our, our, Rust, or our, our REST API here, and you can see that there's a couple of methods. We have info, we have upload, and we have slash. Info is going to give you a Git version or a, a Git request in terms of, of what data do the chains have, what are some of the IBC information, and things like that where maybe we don't want to link a application directly to our files. Instead, we can link them to a REST API, and so it's more expandable. The slash endpoint for post request will allow us to specify within the body, I want to execute a transaction on chain A, and we can do that all from within one API or maybe chain B or whatever the case may be. And then upload will allow us to upload a contract or some arbitrary file to one of the validators or one of the full nodes, and we can then tell it to do some action. So if we wanted to upload a Cosmosm contract, hey, upload a Cosmosm contract to validator A, store it and then return me back the, the code ID. So that way this is all done through the REST API and you do not need the JunoD binary or any other binaries for that matter. Within info, we can see here what time we started the chain. Uh, we can see the information such as the RPC address. So I can now go access this RPC address that has already been started and go see that we're at block 102 and now 103. Uh, it also shows up the, the REST API, so if you, if you enjoy using this for bots, you can quickly scan through the swagger here. And then there's also the gRPC address for things such as the Hermes Relayer, and then some extra information such as the, the IBC channels that are currently open. So because we connected these together, by default, the ICS20 version is, is specified here in an unordered configuration, and you can see all of that through this array. And then finally, in the chain section, we just show what the, the configuration of these chains are. Maybe you wanted to query a chain type for some reason in your web app. You can just hit that against this, grab out chains, grab out chain type, and now you receive Cosmos. And so via a simple REST API, you're able to see all this information. So now this is cool, but how do we actually utilize this in terms of writing tests, whether that be in Python, in Rust, or in Go? In this example, I'm gonna show a Rust example that is the most common use case that we're gonna see for this because contract developers do write it in Rust. So let's make testing in Rust on end to end easy. So we're gonna head over here into the Rust directory, into main, and then we have an example here in the main file. So I'm going to minimize this some. And let's actually open this in So now that we have the, the chains up and we're ready to interact with it, 
we have built out a REST client that allows for you to not have to deal with any of the REST API or, or the REST API. We handle that. You just solely use REST syntax that you're used to. So in this case, we're going to pull for start. Maybe the chain has not actually started up yet. We can have this as a blocking, waiting for that chain to start. As soon as that REST API comes online, it will start. We can also have a max, you know, timeout of 150 seconds where if it doesn't start in our specified time, fail the test. Um, this is a, a, up to you. Then we need to build the chains just to have a base template for the interactions here. So we have a chain request builder. We're going to specify, you know, the API URL, which is that, that 8080 port. You can, of course, change this within the local interchain binary as well via CLI flag. Uh, specifying the, the, the chain IDs here, these are also in the, the, the JSON file that we have, and then return an error if not, and we're going to do that for the second chain as well since we are relaying between these. Then you can write out your test using COSM, WASM, or just direct interaction. So in this example, we're going to grab a CWIBC example. We're going to we're going to grab our relayer instance. We're going to create a new COSM WASM contract object. Then within these, we're going to store uh, set set file on both of the chains that way we can test interaction there. Do some assertions. We're then going to instantiate this contract with the label uh, admin. You can change all of these things as needed if for some reason this instantiate function didn't have all of the features that you wanted, you're able to then further expand this out on top of the REST API and build out your own instantiate function. Uh, and so you're not, you're not limited by what upstream has, you're limited by what your ideas really are. Then here we create a WASM connection between both. Since both contracts are now uploaded, we want to actually create that relayer connection right there. Then we can get these channels, we can make sure that the channels are roughly where we expect, and then we can begin to do cross cross-chain executions here, where we're going to increment on contract B across the channel back to A. We're then going to flush those, those relayer packets there so that that happens quicker and instantly. And then we're going to query the, the contract on, on chain A to make sure that value B is actually moved over uh, across IBC. Check that. We're going to then dump the, the response to that and we can validate it. Other useful things for chain developers are things like recovering keys. You can, you know, validate different keys that are upstreamed, uh, that those match what you have here. You can get Genesis file contents. You can actually overwrite the Genesis file. So you can stop the node, add a new Genesis file, and then start the node back based off of, of your needs there. Other things that we have here too are getting the home directory, getting all of, all of the files that you would need with interacting on a normal node, you can access through this and we have a lot of tests here. So let's run up here. Let's run this test. We'll see it, it build. And then once this begins to build, it will it will start to, to go through each test that we have here outlined, such as getting past queries, binaries, bank sends, IBC contract relaying, grabbing node information, such as what are the actual specs of the build? Maybe you want to build on uh, SDK 45 but you're going to do some other logic versus if you built on a 47 chain. You can check all of this within, within our API here. So now we can see bank sends are happening. The person had zero Juno before. Now the new user has five Juno. We can see that we're now uploading these contracts. We can see other things such as just direct interaction where maybe we want to decode a transaction from mainnet. We can decode it on testnet here and grab this information into a simple object such as how many tokens were sent in this, what gas was used, was it a fee? Was it a fee grant based transaction? All of this can be seen without needing the Juno binary. Now we can see here that the the contract has been uploaded on both chains and it is beginning to initialize. We are scanning the transactions here to grab out the the needed data so that we the, you as the developer do not have to. Everything has been abstracted away. All you need to do is use the the front end uh, tools and the driver that we have have given you here, and we handle everything else. Now we have that transaction is good and then we're going to see the execute and the IBC flush actually happen. And now that's been pushed through and we did have an, oh, that's not an error. That's a, that's the, the contract dump because it is not parsing properly due to JSON, but we can see that the number on the query res, which as we can see here, query res is actually one. So that, that connection was successful there. And you can also see that by, by decoding the, the base 64 logic. And then at the end, we, we overwrite the genesis and then we stop the node. So this, this is a, a rough example showing you how even IBC transactions can be done in a very native to Rust way, despite not having to write a, a go, 
GO contract or IBC contract or a anything like that in terms of, of overhead that, that you would need.